Hi guys and welcome to the Chuni channel. This is your host Vanessa Chuni. Today I'm going to be doing a little educational video for you guys. Um, it's all about creative writing. Now I know that gives a lot of problems to uh, many, a young one and even the older ones too. Um, but instead of having this fright and this shock about it, I think um, the first thing is we need to relax. Creative writing is not as um, horrendous as it sounds okay actually it will help to remember that we are all natural born storytellers i mean if you can make up a lie you can tell a story right and uh, since we have been kids we have always been telling stories example um who threw down the sugar um nobody mom that's telling a story right so that's a basic example um children love to be told stories they love to listen to stories adults as well we never grow tired of hearing stories so before you even begin to write a story i think what um you should encourage your child to do is to just tell stories for the fun of it to just share ideas and enjoy telling stories to each other and of course every night you make up a bedtime story you don't even have to read from a book you can make up children just love it when they hear different and unique stories that they've never heard before add a, a little twist here and there and there you've got the foundation of great storytelling what i tried the other day with my family was um, well i have a four member family two little boys uh, myself and my husband and we took turns telling a story so um, you can ask someone to pick who goes first. In this case, um, I think yeah, my husband went first, the daddy went first. He started off the story and then another person took a turn and added something to the story and so on and we kept building. Um, it's the term I think some people use for this is scaffolding the story. So you start off with a basic concept or idea and then each person takes a turn and make it, makes it like a little fun game. And I think the important thing when you're telling the story is you need to have a twist or a surprise ending. Like you build up the story. So I did the resolution or the ending of the story and I tried to make it totally unexpected. And my son was like, wow, I didn't realize, I didn't see that coming. And I was like, that's exactly what makes the story exciting. You need to throw in something that your audience or your readers would not have expected. So once you get your kids used to that idea of telling a, a unique and an interesting story, you have the foundation there for the story. Now I know in Trinidad we have um, the SEA creative writing exam sometime in May. That would be May 2018 next year. And I do offer um, some advice and some tips when I give lessons. My uh, background includes, my, my educational background is um, seven years at Napri Girls High School and three years at um, the University of the West Indies. Was it three years or four? It's so, so long ago, yeah. First class honors in English and French. Um, so I've been teaching also for 16 years and um, you really pick up things as you go along. You could learn so much, but the experience is really what helps you to hone your craft as a teacher. And I, I would say I'm always learning. I never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, what I would hands down recommend as the first and best tip for helping your child with creative writing is to borrow books from your local library. Borrow as many books as you can. This is how I got my child to love reading because as most children do, they, they resist it in the beginning. They say, oh, I can't do it. I hate reading. I don't want to do it. But you have to instill that love of reading in your child at a very tender early age, which is what I did from the time um, he started preschool. I would take him to the library and let him choose which books he wanted. And of course, I would choose a few that I thought were appropriate. And then you build gradually, gradually to more complex books. And um, of course, children love books with big, bright pictures in the beginning. Um, the other day, I found this gem of a book um, in the library. It's called Share a Scare. Um, the authors are, let me see, 
Nancy Lewin, Lewin, illustrated by Christopher Lyles. And what I love about this book, of course, is the illustrations. It's so colorful and eye-catching for the children. And basically, it's actually a workbook on storytelling. They're actually giving you ideas on how to scaffold or build a story. So here they have tool one, which is establishing the setting of the story. Tool two, developing the characters in the story. Then tool three, um, sensory details. Like we all know the five senses are seeing, uh, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting. So sensory details would appeal to the five senses. Um, foreshadowing would be your creating a, a kind of suspense in the reader's mind by building up to a certain event, right? And while they are giving you these tools, they are telling a story, a very interesting, exciting story as we go along. And it, it really did turn out to be a scary story with a, an unexpected ending or surprise twist. It was very unpredictable. So we have tool five, which is a plot or the actual body, main events of the story. Tool six is the surprise or the twist that I was talking about. Then we have <clears throat> the suspense where the reader does not know what's going to happen next. And that's, that's really important, not just for scary stories, but if you want any story to be exciting. Then we have tool eight, which is imagery. And this does not only have to be visual imagery. Again, it could appeal to the five senses. Anything that makes the story clear in the reader's mind, you can describe how something feels and tastes, right? And then we have, oh yes, um, imagery can also include things like similes, like they were describing that the lady's eyes were burning like red balls of fire. And they were saying, um, what if they had compared her eyes to um, red balls of candy or licorice, would it have been as scary? So they're talking about using appropriate descriptions if you want it to be scary, right? That's an important point. And then we have tool nine, which is a dialogue or conversation, usually in inverted commas. Um, we have to be careful we don't make the story sound like a play. We have to keep that dialogue to a minimum, but it can be a very exciting tool if done properly. And we have, well, the story, as you can see, it, we have tool 10 here, which was the actors need to take action to make the story interesting. You cannot only tell the story, you have to have the actors do something exciting. And then tool 11, punctuation for effect so they, they for example they showed you how to use suspension dots and create effective pauses and exclamation marks as well so punctuation is an important tool then there is the climax which is the most intense part of the story tool 13 is the ending often called the conclusion or resolution and I believe it was 13, 13 points that I summarized here so all in all this is a very good book from the library I got it at St. Helena library if you can find it in your bookstore and purchase it I would say it's a great investment um, I'm seeing here the price was $78 at the time so I wouldn't mind investing in a book like this for my child. I thought it was very helpful. Um, normally what most teachers do when they're, create, when they're discussing creative writing is they use this um, triangular approach where you start with the scene or the setting. This includes details of the um, time, the weather, um, the location of course, was, was it on a beach, in a mountain, a cave, whatever it is. So we need to know where the setting is, the time of day, all these things could help. Um, then we have rising action, which really is in the main plot or the body of the essay. 
This forms part of the body. This is where we introduce characters. Very important. We need to know who the characters are. One or two is enough. You don't need a whole bunch of characters. It's a short story, usually four to five paragraphs. And the action we create in this section, we also create a problem or a dilemma. Same thing. Or conflict because you know. In Trinidad, we love Bacchanal, but all over the world we can say people find confusion is interesting. So this is where we create a little confusion, meaning not that confusing the reader, but a little um, conflict. And it doesn't always have to be physical conflict, people rolling on the ground fighting. It could be something is bothering or worrying a character that's internal conflict. And all this will lead to the climax, so the most exciting part of the story. I think we all know what climax means. This is the point of highest tension. And then somebody thinks of an idea to resolve the problem, an idea or solution. And things start to wind up and we come to the resolution or the ending of the story where everything usually works out and is solved. But we can also have a suspenseful ending where the reader is left to guess what would happen after. That is usually the case with most thrillers and um, scary stories as we saw there. So these are different parts of the story that um, comprise the creative writing for the SEA. And basically, as I said, get your child interested in reading and telling stories and have fun with it. Make, make it an enjoyable activity so that, you know, the path of least resistance is always the best. Okay, guys, and good luck to the parents and all the students writing SEA next year. I'm available for um, advice, consultation tips. My name is Vanessa Chuni. Thank you all for watching. Bye. Till next time.